Today, we're gonna explore a nice problem which has its motivation in one of the most famous math conjectures that's around right now. And so in particular, what we'll look at today is the following question. So which even numbers cannot be expressed as the sum of two odd composite numbers? And so this is motivated by something called Goldbach's conjecture. In fact, this is maybe like the anti-Goldbach problem. And we'll see that by the fact that Goldbach's conjecture says that every even number bigger than or equal to four can be expressed as the sum of two primes. So here we're talking about the sum of two odd composites. Down here we're talking about the sum of two primes. And implicitly inside of this is the fact that we need both of those primes to be odd because, in fact, there's only a single even prime and we're talking about even numbers bigger than or equal to four. So I guess four itself is the one that can be written as the sum of two even primes, two plus two, but everything else will require two odd primes. Okay. So I'd just like to point out that this is checked up to a fairly large number. In fact, it's checked up to four times 10 to the 18. So if one could come up with a proof that only covers all of the numbers after this point, then that together with this computer checking would mean that we're good to go. Okay, so there is no proof for Goldbach conjecture, but what's really nice about it is it's got this really simple formulation, which probably is one of the reasons it's so difficult. Okay, so let's look at a little heuristic argument for why we expect Goldbach's conjecture to be true. So I'd like to point out just again that this is not a proof, it's just an argument for our expectation. Okay, so let's say that we have a large even natural number. So let's say that large even natural number is 2n. So we'd like to write 2n as the sum of a and b. So it's a plus b, where a and b are both odd numbers. Now we'd like to look at the likelihood that they are both primes. So the fact that they're both odd numbers mean they come from the following set. So A and B both come from this set, 1, 3, 5, 7, all the way up to 2n minus 1. And let's notice once we choose A, we have B chosen like for free. And that's because by this equation up here, we have B is equal to 2n minus A. So let's talk about how many choices for the pairs of A and B there are. And that's a pretty easy number to count because we could choose A to be 1, 3, 5, 7, so on and so forth. So that means that there are n choices for A and B. So the choice for A fixes the choice for B. Okay, then there's this thing called the prime number theorem. So we won't prove this. This is like a fairly difficult proof in analytic number theory. But the prime number theorem says that the probability that a large n is prime goes on the order of 1 over the natural log of n. Okay, so if you've got a list of a million numbers, so one through a million, and you pick one at random, the probability that that one, at, that one at random will be prime is approximately equal to one over the log of one million. But now we can use the multiplicative properties of probability to say that the probability that A and B are both prime, so I'll write it like this, probability A and B are prime is equal to the product of the probabilities that each of them are prime. So that'll be one over the natural log of A times the natural log of B. And this is obviously like a little bit sketchy because if B is very, very close to two N minus one, then A is really, really close to one and thus it's more likely to be prime because it's in the smaller half of the numbers. But like I said, this is just a heuristic argument. It gives us some sort of idea for why this should be true. Okay, so now that we've got this probability, maybe I should change this equality to like, um, an approximate equality, since again, we're playing it fast and loose here. 
So now we'd like to look at the expected way of writing 2n as the sum of two primes. Great. And what that'll be is the sum over all a plus b, which are equal to 2n, of the probability that these are equal to a prime. So it would be 1 over the natural log of a times the natural log of b. But now let's notice that a and b are both less than 2n. So that means this thing right here is bigger than the sum over all of these a plus b equal to n of 1 over the natural log of 2 times capital N squared. Again, that's because we replaced the natural log of a with the log of 2n and the natural log of b with the log of 2n. But now we're just adding something to itself, and we're adding it to itself n times. So this is equal to n over the natural log of 2n quantity squared. But now you can check maybe with L'Hopital's rule or some sort of ar other argument for this sequence. And what you'll notice is that as n goes to infinity, this object also goes to infinity. Which means for large natural numbers, the expected number of ways of writing them as the sum of two primes just increases without bound. So that means we would always expect for there to be at least one way to express them as the sum of two primes. Okay, so anyway, this is like our argument for the likelihood of the Goldbach conjecture to be true, but it's not a proof. But one thing that we can prove or that we can answer in completeness is our following question, which we started the video with, this anti-Goldbach problem. So let's go to that. So now we're back to our original question, which is which even numbers cannot be expressed as the sum of two odd composites? And we'll prove the following claim, and that is that every even natural number can be written as the sum of two odd composites, except for the ones on this list, which I have in the purple box. So that would be all numbers between two and 16, the number 20, 22, 26, 28, 32, and 38. We can really quickly talk why some of these small ones can't. Notice the number 2 definitely can't. The only way to write that as the sum of two odd numbers is 1 plus 1, but 1 is not prime nor composite. It's called a unit. And then let's see, the next number would be 4. The only way to express 4 as the sum of two odd numbers would be 1 plus 3. 1 is a unit, not prime or composite, and 3 is a prime. And then you can play around with these small numbers to get a feel for why those don't work as well. So what we'll do is come up with a method to show that big classes of these can be expressed as the sum of two odd composites, and then those big classes will miss everything on this purple list. And then you just check by exhaustion that these will not work, and we won't do that completely. Okay, so I'd like to point out first that reliably odd composite numbers are of the form 6m plus 3, where m is bigger than or equal to 1. That's because that's divisible by 3 and it's strictly larger than 3. So that gives us motivation to look at numbers of the form 6m plus something because those are reliably odd composites. Now we'll look at even numbers that are of that form. So in other words, of the form 6m plus something. And we'll look at this through a couple of observations. So let's notice that if m is bigger than or equal to 3, then we have the number 6m can be written as follows. 6m minus 9 plus 9. So that's clear. We just added 0. And now we can group this 6m minus 9 and we can factor a 3 out of it. So that'll give us 3 times 2m minus 3 plus 9. Great. But then by our choice right here that m is bigger than or equal to 3, that tells us that this number right here is strictly bigger than 1. But if this number right here is strictly bigger than 1, then that means this term right here with the magenta overline is a composite. And then furthermore, 9 is also a composite. 
So that means we've expressed numbers of the form 6m where m is bigger than or equal to 3 as the sum of two odd composites. Okay, so let's see which numbers this covers. So it starts at m equals 3, which is 18, and then does multiples of 6 after that. So we've got 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, the next one would be 48, 54, and so on and so forth. So it covers all of those numbers. So that's why, for instance, 18 is not on this list because it's covered by this case right here. Okay, so now let's move on and let's look at the case that m is bigger than or equal to 7, and we'll look at even numbers of the form 6m plus 2. So if we're looking at numbers of the form 6m plus something, something, the even ones are 6m, 6m plus 2, and 6m plus 4. So that's what we have to cover here. Okay, so here I'll write 6m plus 2 in this tricky way. It'll be 6m minus 33 plus 35. Now we'll group this first bit just like we did before and we'll factor a 3 out of it. That'll give me 3 times 2m minus 11 and then we'll have plus 35. And now let's note that since m is bigger than or equal to 7 here, we know this 2m minus 11 is strictly bigger than 1, just like before, just like up here, I should say. Also, it's clearly an odd number. Maybe we should have pointed that out up here as well. So that means we've got 3 times a number which is strictly bigger than 1, making this number right here a composite, and then 35 is also clearly a composite. So we've written 6m plus 2 as the sum of two composites. So let's see what this covers. So this starts at the number 44, and we can see that by plugging in m equals 7 into here. We get 6 times 7, which is 42, plus 2 is 44. And then we add 6 to get the next one, so that would be 50, and then 56, and then ne the next one would be 62, 68, and so on and so forth. So it covers all of those numbers. Okay, so now let's look at our last case, and our last case will be numbers of the form 6m plus 4, and in this case, we can only consider m bigger than or equal to 5. So we have 6m plus 4, and we're going to do the same kind of trick. We'll pull this apart into pieces so that we can do some factorization. So let's write this as 6m minus 21 plus 25. Good. And then we'll group the 6n minus 21 and factor to give us 3 times 2m minus 7 plus 25. But now, since m is bigger than or equal to 5, we know 2m minus 7 is strictly bigger than 1. But that means that this is a composite, and then 25 is also clearly a composite. So we've expressed 6m plus 4 as the sum of two composites. And now let's see what this covers. So for m equals 5, we get 34. So the smallest number covered here is 34. And then the next one would be 40, and then 46, and then 52, and then 58, and so on and so forth. Great. So now I'd like to notice that everything that is bigger than or equal to 40 is covered. Notice here we have 40 is covered, and then 42 is covered here, 44 is covered here, 46 is covered here, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, and so on and so forth. You can see that we can write all of the numbers bigger than or equal to 40 using these two odd composites, which means the special cases occur at numbers 38 and lower. And that's why we can remove some of those from our list. So notice 34 can be removed from the list, 36 can be removed from the list, 30 can be removed from the list, and so on and so forth, until we're down to this list which is in the purple box.
And like I said before, this list in the purple box can be just checked with exhaustion that they cannot be written as the sum of two odd composites. So I hope you liked the video. And if you did, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've already subscribed, maybe think about joining our Patreon. We're do really doing some special stuff with all of the funds that we raise with our Patreon. And it's the best way to help the channel grow. And that's a good place to stop.